So the president says he wants to send the illegals to sanctuary cities. I gotta say, it's pretty damn funny. For those of you who haven't been following the situation, uh, normally down at the border, if someone gets caught trying to cross the border illegally, they will be turned back by Border Patrol and they'll just say, hey, go back where you came from and they'll be sent right back. So what's happened is a lot of people have gotten smart to this fact and they realize that it's too hard to sneak across the border, which is frankly why I don't think a wall was necessarily the best investment. So instead now people actually flag down the Border Patrol and they try and get caught. Uh, and so what they do once they get caught is they apply for political asylum. Now, of course, political asylum is a pretty international uh, legal concept. Of course, until recently, Julian Assange was uh, a citizen of Ecuador under uh, political asylum. So once someone coming up through the southern border applies for political asylum, they have to be detained by uh, ICE or the Border Patrol, whoever, and uh, they are entitled to due process. Meaning, no matter how uh, spurious their claim of us, uh, their you know their plea for asylum is, they need to get a hearing before a judge. But there are only so many judges who deal with these cases. Uh, so if there's too many people applying at once, well then there's a backlog, and these folks will have to uh, be detained for some uh, amount of time. And of course, a lot of NGOs uh, have gotten smart to this fact as well, and so they've started to teach people, hey, if we can get a lot of people to flood the board and, and apply for political asylum at once. Uh, ICE won't be able to detain all of them because they don't have a large enough facilities for all these people. So then they'll just have to re release them out uh, into the general public of the United States. And of course, once that happens, because the people know that they, their asylum claim would be turned down anyway, they just don't show up for their court date. So it's a pretty ingenious scheme, and it's pretty hard to get around because, I mean, what, are you just going to stop accepting you know, people applying for political asylum? I mean, that would be a, a pretty drastic measure. Um, and so Trump came up with something that is actually uh, not that drastic at all. He said, OK, we'll release these people who we can't keep detained, but instead of releasing them in a red state like Texas, let's just bust them into uh, sanctuary cities, which tend to be in blue states. So if the president's smart, he will specifically bust them not only to sanctuary cities, but sanctuary cities which are in safe blue areas. And which, frankly, the Democrats, if they really care about uh, these uh, migrants crossing the border, you would think they'd be happy to accept them. They'd be saying, oh, thankful. They'd see this as a win. They'd say, oh, finally, the, the president is going to let us protect these people from deportation, and we'll just keep them in the sanctuary city. But uh, sadly, the Democrats, it turns out, at least the politicians that I've seen on TV, uh, don't actually believe in the sanctuary city policy. It's just posturing. It was essentially a bluff because they are very upset at Trump for sending all the illegals into the sanctuary cities. They'd much rather he released them into red states like Texas or Florida so that they could try and use these illegals to flip those states. The Democrats apparently have no use uh, for these Latin American migrants in New York or California. Now, I was thinking to myself, a lot of people like to compare the situation with letting in uh, people from Latin America at the southern border to uh, letting in the Jews during World War II, which, of course, FDR famously turned back a boat that came all the way from Germany with Jewish refugees and turned them back, and they went back to Germany and were slaughtered. If during that time there were certain states or cities that like would set up sanctuary for Jews saying that, hey, if you're, if you're a Jew fleeing Germany and you make it into our city or our state, we'll protect you from deportation. I'd have to imagine that if Roosevelt made the offer uh, to, like, let's say, New York City, that, hey, this boat's coming from Germany. I don't want the, to take them in, but, hey, if you really want them that bad, we'll just put them in New York, but you have to keep them in New York City. I'd imagine that uh, they would say, well, yes, that's great. That's exactly what our whole sanctuary city policy is about. And they would have gladly uh, accepted Jewish refugees fleeing the Holocaust. But the fact now that Democratic leaders don't want to uh, accept these uh, supposed refugees tells me not only that these people don't care about uh, the folks coming across the border who actually do come from pretty bad situations. They're just using these folks as political pawns. And so for Trump to come up with a compromise position like this uh, is unfathomable for them. But frankly, Trump's position is closer to the, to the correct one, I think, even though I think he means it somewhat facetiously, uh, because before the 1880s, uh, states made their own immigration laws. We had no federal immigration law until uh, the Chinese Exclusion Act. And frankly, things worked out a lot better back in those days uh, because – the 50 states are rather diverse in their politics, and so it would make sense – and their economy. So it would make sense to me that they would each be able to have their own immigration policy. Certain states perhaps uh, would want to restrict immigration more than others. This is understandable. 
So why not let California have more migrants as long as they stay in California? And why not let Texas have less migrants? Because, I mean, if people want to come in, uh, they're better off being able to go to a blue state like California or New York rather than just being locked out of the country in general, which, again, if we're going to have one immigration policy for all 50 states, you run the risk of having a restrictionist uh, administration in there like the Trump administration who would prefer to have uh, less immigrants over more immigrants. Now, of course, it, it should be noted that if the uh, U.S. government, under the gu under the uh, guidance of people like Elliot Abrams, had not destabilized Latin America for the la over the last century, uh, then there probably wouldn't be so many Latin American refugees coming up through the country. Uh, because if you look at a lot of these countries and you try and look into the history of you know see well, uh, why are they so poor and destabilized. Uh, a lot of it has to do with uh, interventionism in the past. And, of course, there's the problem today of uh, the drug war. Because the U.S. government, since uh, the start of the 1970s, has been fighting this failed war on drugs, uh, there is a huge uh, demand for narcotics within the United States that cannot be filled by uh, domestic uh, U.S. pharmaceutical companies. So what this means is that, you know, you get drug cartels that form, and they try and grow these things in Latin America uh, because it's easier to grow them there and keep them safe from the government, and then just try and ship in the finished product to the United States. But of course, because uh, this is an illicit trade, uh, these drug cartels don't have access uh, to the courts and the police like a normal company would. So essentially that means they have to enforce their own contracts. I mean, if they make a deal with somebody and uh, the other guy doesn't hold up his end of the deal, they have to go and collect on his debt. They can't just sue him in a court like a normal business would. So this leads to a lot of violence, and uh, this violence is perpetuated uh, even more so by the U.S. government trying to help Latin American governments crack down on them violently. And so there's just this endless cycle of violence driving people north uh, through the U.S. southern border. So we should always keep that in mind, that there really wouldn't be a big immigration problem if the U.S. you know, hadn't destabilized Latin America. And by the U.S., I don't mean the government in general. I don't mean uh, your local city councilman. I'm talking about you know folks in the CIA and uh, the Pentagon, folks like Elliot Abrams and John Bolton. So perhaps instead of saying abolish ICE, the radical Democrats should be saying abolish the CIA, since the CIA really hasn't done anything of use for the country in uh, its whole history of its existence. I mean, it's only existed since the end of World War II, and all they've done since then is stir up trouble that's ultimately uh, come back uh, to bite Americans at home, whether that be all their meddling in the Middle East, which uh, was used as justification by al-Qaeda for the 9-11 attacks, or all their meddling in Latin America, which is driving refugees up through the border. Yet I fail to think of one achievement of the CIA other than perhaps uh, the current state of the Chilean government, since they did turn the tide in Chile politically and overthrow their uh, leftist uh, president and replaced him with a, a dictator who s oversaw some good economic prosperity. But I mean, again, one, that doesn't benefit Americans at all. And two, I still don't really consider installing a dictator in somebody else's country a, v a victory out of, you know, sort of out of principle. That's not really something that I think is a good idea just because it happened to work out well in the end that Chile is now the richest and most stable Latin American country, you know, I guess I can give the, the CIA some credit, but I mean, they have had so many other failures, you know, in Iran and in Central America and Brazil, uh, so many places you can name. So I think that about does it for today. Uh, if you gained anything of value from this video, I'd appreciate you clicking that like button and subscribing. And don't forget to hit the bell because I do upload every day, and I'd hate to have you miss one. Uh, so I'll see you back here tomorrow.